Hey, what's up? So, just completed Zack Snyder's Twilight of the Gods, the animated series, based on Norse mythology, and I would give this show a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, it's it's definitely better than Blood of Zeus, I thought. It's far more violent. I love the art style. The art style, you know, the character designs. It's very min minimalistic, very simple, looks kind of basic, but it makes sense during the action set pieces because they have some epic action set pieces. Now, the environments, they are beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. The environments are beautifully crafted. Everything feels detailed. The world, the uh, all these places that they've created with how they use colors and illuminating some scenes just look beautiful. This is outside the characters, outside the character designs. They, they're okay. Character designs are okay. They aren't perfect, but they're okay. They're okay for what they're supposed to do in terms of the fight scenes, in terms of the movements. And they facilitate easy animation. For an animator, it would be more easy to animate the dynamic uh, fight scenes because of the character designs. But now when you look at the world, you know, those wide shots of, they look beautiful. They are beautifully conceptualized. Um, they, they are very out of this world ideas in terms of the creatures, in terms of all these other characters, the gods, and the simple uh, ideas into how this universe actually works. Like, for example, when, you, when you're going to the giant's uh, particular home, there's something that they have to blow and then you see the bridge form itself and then the bridge kind of looks really cool. So generally, the world in terms of design looks very, very beautiful. It's actually, that, that for me was one of my favorite things. And then it's like the directors knew that they had some really visual shots. So sometimes they will linger with some shots for you to just enjoy the white takes of this particular world. And that looks beautiful. And some fights actually look good. There's one particular one with the dragon that I was like, yeah, the scope of what they're trying to capture looked actually really, really, really good. Um, apart from that, Apart from that, I like the idea of Norse mythology and actually Zack Snyder and, uh, is it called Jay Oliver, taking that world and remodeling it and telling this story. Yes, I have a lot of problems with what they did, especially with the character of Thor, but the idea of having a different look at Thor and Loki and uh, Secret and Liv, these characters that, they, that, that are in this story, that was kind of interesting because we are used to the Thor and the Loki from the Marvel uh, Marvel comics, but this is a different take on those characters. So that story is pretty interesting, and it's done pretty well. I, I will actually say this is slightly better than Blood of Zeus. I thought it was more co uh, the, the, the structure was more cohesive than Blood of Zeus because Blood of Zeus, I kind of struggled following what was happening. It was easy to follow, but I kind of struggled. This one is kind of basic because it's some, something happens to Sigrid family thanks to Thor, and so now she has to. Uh, get some people then go around look for weapons then go and look for you know look for assistance into how to get to Asgard and so they have to go when they go to these different factions they have to also do other things in order for them to be able to be given maybe helped by a person or a person to accept to join them to go into this battle so they had to go into all these other side mission rebel moon you might think um, Think of Rebel Moon, that same structure is used here. And so now you get the final episode and now they have to face off with the gods. So that's a very basic premise you can actually follow. You can actually, uh, you can actually follow from episode 1 to 8. Each episode is like 25 to 30 minutes, so they are very short episodes. You can just go through them very quickly. Now, I like the idea of the world. I like Sigrid's motivation because it's very, very clear. As, I, as I've said, her motivation is clear from the world go. Because what's ha what happens to her is pretty clear. Liv, his motivation is also very clear because he clearly loves uh, Sigrid. And then he has to, you know, do anything for her. And so he accepts to go with her throughout the journey. So those are two of the characters that actually followed. Now, all the other extra characters are interesting. But what I found to be very challenging about the show is what they introduced with Odin. Because Odin has a vision about the future and you see some of his vision of the future. And I don't know how Christians are going to look at this because, you know, there's an element of Jesus Christ that is presented. The idea of Jesus Christ in the present. There's a way that they try to insinuate something about Jesus Christ that 
may rub a lot of people the wrong way because it goes into trying to blend the idea of Norse mythology with modern day Christianity and the concept of worship. So yeah, there's that and some Christians may struggle with those bits because the first thing that comes into mind, Norse mythology, you think of paganism because it's outside the Christianity, whatever. So the blending of those two things, some people may struggle with. Now, why did I not like this show? By, by the way, this show is brutal, it's bloody, there's a lot of nudity, there are, there are here and there sex organs clearly in frame. There is a scene where there's a threesome. So it's, it's yeah, if you're going into this, don't, do not go into this with children. This is mature, like, like 18 and over. Yeah, it's pretty, it's very explicit, it's very violent, extremely violent. I mean, there, there are scenes where Thor just sends a lightning bolt and it just disseminates a person. See a person just pop like a bubble gum or like a balloon. So yeah, don't go into this with kids. Uh, now, what did I not like about the show? Hmm, this is where things get very interesting because this is a Netflix show. So there's a lot of DEI. There's, there's a lot of pandering to women. In fact, this is more of a women's show than it is uh, a, just a show for everyone because it panders a lot to women. I know some people will be like, oh, no, you're just hating. Based on what I talked about in Transformers, you may think that I'm hating on women, especially in modern productions. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. My favorite character in this show is Sigrid. Sigrid is the main character. She's the best part of this show because her motivation is clear and her motivation is consistent throughout the show. Apart from the ending where they try to imply something because something happens to her where they, she gets to meet her, you know, and, and then she has to now meet her and then they try to promise a next season because of what happens during the end. But generally, I had a problem with how it, it, there's not just push for female characters in this show and there's nothing wrong with that but it's Norse mythology and, and so you feel like the male characters live there's the wolf guy there are all these other male characters feel more tamer than the female characters the female characters feel more like the warriors and the male characters feel like just tame people who are never aggressive apart from Thor, Thor is the one who now feels more aggressive feels more unhinged he is actually a threat you can understand is he, he's much more villainous he's much more aggressive he feels like a warrior he's framed like a warrior all these other characters feel much more tame they don't feel as epic as everything else that is being established they don't feel as epic as the world they don't feel as epic as north mythology apart from that there were some things that they did with thor that i was like no shit, no this, this is garbage I, th I thought the thing with Thor was absolute trash. But what they did with the character in terms of what they had set up, it's absolute garbage. That ending with Thor, that is trash. That's one of the worst endings for a character that I've ever seen. I mean, technically it's not an ending, but what they did with the character during that particular period, uh, I'm sorry, Zach, I love you, man. I, I, I love what you do. I, I, I am in it for your action set pieces, how you frame your shots. I love everything about what you do. But that ending is a no-no for me. Now, that was trash, that, that was garbage. Thor, while looking for his brother, takes out a village of giants, like a full village of giants, alone, because he's looking for his brother. He's looking for Loki. Now, during that end scene, during that final battle, his brother, Bad Ar, Bad Ar the golden guy, gets killed by a human being. So a human being killed his brother. What do you expect Thor to do? Even if you're at war, what do you think Thor would be thinking right now? He will take out everyone. The place will be raining thunder. The place will be raining lightning. The guy would go berserk. He would kill everyone. He would kill the gods. He would kill the human beings. Because number one, it's established as he has an ego. He's self-centered and is full of himself as a god. He would eliminate everything in that field. Why? Because already you've established the fact that even when he's doing something as small as looking for his brother, he's capable of doing some despicable things. So when you get to a point where you've killed his brother, his anger is supposed to be unquenched. He's supposed to destroy everything. His anger is supposed to be 
out of this world. It's supposed to be it's supposed to go berserk mode, whereby it's not even a human anymore. It's a lightning bolt, and it's just destroying everything on its way, everything including the gods. And if I was to be the one who wrote this particular story, that particular ending, you know what I'll do? I'll have Odin. Odin is in his small chambers, they dreaming about Ragnarok, thinking about Ragnarok. You know, being worried about Ragnarok. What I'll do in that particular scene is have Thor. You know, we've established that Odin is thinking about Ragnarok. He's worried about Ragnarok. He's disturbed by the concept of Ragnarok. He has a vision of this future where, yeah, that shit will go down. And, and so during that particular period, I would have Thor go berserk and start destroying everything, everything on his, in his way. You know, it's, it's just, he's just gone. It's just become something that is uncontrollable. Then I'll have Odin come out and go like, oh my goodness, I'm sitting here worried about Ragnarok and Ragnarok is actually happening right now, right here with Thor. And so he would, he would be forced to actually send his own son to Valhalla, not because he wants to save the people, not because he wants to save the rest of the, the, rest of the gods, because he just wants to prevent Ragnarok during this particular period. So that's what I would have done, because that would have been more epic because he's given one of the most anticlimactic ending to him for this particular season because something happens and then we meet him again. But that was so anticlimactic that I, I got myself shrugging and going like, yeah, of course, this is a fucking Netflix show. That's what they were going to do with him. I mean, why? That's so, that's so, I don't want to use the word weak. That's so lame. It's, 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 it's one of the easiest, it's just a very easy way to get rid of a character. I don't think it was earned, you know, with what, especially with what you've established with Thor. You have his brother killed and he's just there. No, I'll have him go insane, man. I'll have him almost destroy, every, almost destroy the world with uh, lightning, with thunder. Because you've already established that the character has a certain personality. I don't like what they did with Thor. I'm going to insist. I do not like. And if Zach, if you're watching this, that's what, that was anticlimactic. Yeah, they would have done some, something better with him. Especially with what you, des, you had established with the character, man. The kind of person that he is. There's no way he was going down that way. That was too easy. I, I mean, we didn't get to get... Yes, you saw some epic moments with him, but that was an opportunity to create one of the in, most insane depiction of a uh, Bazak Thor. Anyway, uh, it's Netflix, so... I don't know why I expected more. So basically that's it. Remember to always watch what you enjoy. And enjoy what you watch. Yeah, you can watch this. It's, it's, it's very entertaining. As I said, the structure is easy to follow. And it's actually entertaining. Yes, some people do not have a problem with how Thor's goal goes down. But generally, it's an interesting... It's a, it's, by the end, you think that it's a very interesting study of religion. 